Hey, welcome to this go around of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we're headed to Wawa. Why Wawa, you ask? Well, it's early February and back at home in Southern Ontario, you can describe the snow conditions with a string of four letter words. But up there, you can use way more than four letters because you can use words like great, fantastic, and outstanding to describe the snow conditions. So let's get this show started. STD has been brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 52 years. Tough, smart, capable. Kimpex, fueled by fun. For this trip, our adventure started here in Sault Ste. Marie where the guys and I arrived last night in the rig. But this morning, we're headed to Search Mount to a staging area there to unload the buggies and hit the trail to Halfway Haven. Our first riding stop will be for a saddlebag overnight stay at Halfway Haven, followed by the ride into Wawa the next day. Then a couple more days of playing around before we ride back here to Search Mount. Plus for this trip, We've also got a couple of special guests along for the ride. Dave Moran and his buddy Dave Tessier are riding with us. Dave was the winner of the OSM Polaris Ride Command sweepstakes. This contest pulled together Polaris snowmobiles, Ontario Tourism and the Algoma region for an all-in trip to ride Polaris sleds equipped with Ride Command technology. The Algoma region was the first one to partner into the contest, which was key because we knew the trails up in this part of Ontario are the type of trails you'd want to ride as a contest winner. Plus, this is one of our favorite places to head to for a week of riding. We've been around for, uh, we're one of, probably one of the original clubs in the province 52 years ago. I think in 1966 we were formed and involved with the forming of the, the OFSC the year after. So, um, you know, we've been in existence for a long time, since the early to mid 70s when this new concept came out about grooming trails. So we, you know, we started developing trails then. Um, you know, we've interconnected with, you know, throughout, throughout our district, throughout the province, which is key, you know, important. So. Um, you know, we've come a long ways. We, you know, we're proud of the trail system that we have here and we hope to keep it for a long time in the future. The train around here is definitely not flat. You're going to find a variation of everything. There are no rail beds to ride. You cross tracks, you don't ride them here. It's unlike probably most places in Southern Ontario or even Michigan. Um, the, the topography, the, the scenic trails, the the versatile trails, you know, some areas you'll get into some flat areas where you can, you know, you can make some good time. There's other areas where it'll be up twisty up mountains. So our northern route um, that goes out of uh, Search Mountain, obviously you can come right out of the, come right out of the Sioux, but going out of Search Mountain up to, uh, to halfway and then halfway, obviously you can now either head over towards Chapel or, or, or continue on to Wawa, Duverville, continue on. That's a, that's a really big draw actually for us for not even, you know, from guys from Southern Ontario, but even for more so because we're sitting on the U.S. border here. We have a lot of interest from, from Americans coming up this way. It's something different. You know, if you ride in, in Michigan, Upper Michigan, there's a lot of rail beds. They, they fall, they come up here. They can't believe what we got. They keep it, they say it's the best kept secret because, you know, it's, it's much different. They, they love the wilderness that, you know, they're, they're running. And again, it's not like what they, you know, they, they're typically used to uh, down south of the border. The size of our trail system, uh, we're running about uh, 600, somewhere around 600 kilometers of trail on our own. Um, we do, I think it's 570, but to be exact, I think it's closer to 600 kilometers. Um, my groomers that run on their long runs run about uh, 79 miles one way. So it's quite a run for our groomer operators. 
So our club faces a lot of challenges on these northern routes. Um, the, the long hauls between uh, when that groomer, groomer leaves search bone, he's gone for, on a, on a really good day, he'll be gone 12, 14 hours, but on you know breaking trail, he could be gone 16, 18, 20 hours. That's our northern road up to halfway. Um, we've been fortunate this year, we're looking at, uh, we've got a groomer situated up there, is helping it a bit, he's still got to go up and back. We also have another northern road that goes over to Black Creek, and he's, uh, but sometimes they go up that way, they're, they're gone for a couple days basically, so it, it's, it is a challenge for them. And, uh, you know, um, the, the ch other big challenge is if, you know, if everything goes good, that's great. If they have a mechanical breakdown, then we got to get move guys up there to do something, and, and there's no road access near any of those places that we're you know, running to. So. Basically, our whole trail system, we groom it weekly. There are certain sections, yeah, we could groom every day, but we can't keep up because of the amount of ridership. And it's like any community that has a lot of ridership in, in a small area. So on our long runs, we groom it once a week, but it gets a double pass once a week. So we have, a, we have two groomers meet at a halfway point, and they run back, so it's had a double pass on it at night, so it has a chance to set up. The next day, you have pristine trails. So come up here and enjoy the, enjoy the country, enjoy the scenery. It's a great place to ride. Coming up after the break, we're going to introduce you to the Daves. Hey, is Dave there, please? Speaking. Dave, it's Matt Clark with On Snow Magazine. Yeah. How are yeah. you doing? I'm all right. Got a question for you. Yeah. Do you feel like going snowmobiling in a couple of weeks on an all-expense-paid trip with Polaris and On Snow Magazine? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice well congratulations nice. dave you are the winner of the polaris ride command contest so i was at work on uh, friday and uh, i got this phone call from matt and uh, so i just uh, kind of i i had an inkling but i wasn't sure so as soon as he said you want to go for a ride I was like, hell yeah, let's go for a ride. You know, I'm new to the sport and I just wanted to experience all of this. So definitely that's why I entered because as soon as I saw that ride command contest online, I was like, that's for me. So I started off snowmobiling uh, last year. A friend of mine, just around the corner from me, uh, he's been snowmobiling his whole life. So, uh, and I've seen him going out at night, usually off when he gets home from work, he would take a snowmobile and drive right by my house and off to the trails and off he went and I was like staring out my front window watching him go and then one day we were talking and he's like you should get a snowmobile Dave yeah actually the winters are not long enough now right so um, really enjoy the, the sport here I am on this trip and when I get back home I'm going to be going on another trip and my wife's not going to like it but it's okay. I wound up on this trip uh, as a guest for uh, Dave Morin uh, Dave Morton won a contest that he had entered with uh, On Snow magazine and asked if I wanted to get away for four days on the sled and I said absolutely so uh, here we are. I had a sled when I was young uh, and uh, for about 35 years no riding at all so this is uh, this trip is really the most riding I've done in, in 35 years. You know Halfway Haven you know what a place can you describe it it's just kind of it's so unique and uh, yeah, we've been treated really well good food good company, so it's in great weather so far. Best snow conditions so far this season, I guess. And a couple more days to go. Absolutely, yeah, it's gonna to be tough to take. <laughs> We're just beginning the second day's ride with the Daves leaving from here, Halfway Haven. We've got a lot of miles to cover yet and some off-trail riding to do, but let me tell you, without the Halfway Haven, riding in the Algoma region would be a lot tougher. Halfway Haven's legendary. It's, uh, it was built about 20 years ago in the middle of nowhere. Um, there was a gentleman that used to pack gas into the bush so that customers could make it from Sault Ste. Marie to Wawa. And uh, that's where the idea came from. And uh, it was built as a snowmobile destination and it basically connects the entire north. So any given day there's, there's hundreds of people um, at some point in the loop and uh, where the gas stop and a sandwich and a friendly face for people to make it to their next, next leap. In the wintertime, it's it's, it's, it can be a zoo. 
Uh, it's just a very busy place and you get people from all over and all different kinds of faces. Um, in the spring and summer, uh, we do a lot of ATV riding here. So it's, it's basically the same trail that you, that you bring from the south, from Searchmont to here. And we have a lot of guests that ride up here ATV. You know, part of our package is if you spend the night, uh, meals are included. So uh, it's logistically getting anything here, getting gas, getting bananas, getting oranges. Logistically, everything's a nightmare. So what I've done is, depending on the night of the week, we have a theme. And, uh, and I want everybody to feel uh, like they can, like last night's burger. <laughs> if somebody's hungry, I'm, I, can, I can hurt you. I just want everybody to feel pleased. So and tell me about last night's burger for uh, for Dave. He well, uh, he stepped it up, didn't he? He did. Like uh, he's begged around as my wrist, and I didn't think there was a chance, and he he, he got it. What was that burger that you? Gave it was him? just a, like a pound of bacon and four patties and and a lot of cheese and a whole bunch of goodness right there. Tell me a little bit about dinner last night, because you had, <laughs> I think you were a target of Sean. Uh, I think as soon as you mentioned that I was the contest winner. Sean had it out for me, so uh, I'm never one to back down from a challenge, and uh, I'm not a big guy to say, but uh, happy to say that I, uh, I I destroyed that burger. It was delicious. Uh, it's all handmade, and uh, Sean is a fantastic cook. From here in Halfway Haven, I'd say we're roughly halfway to Wawa, and we're going to continue the trip up to see the Big Goose. Our second day riding will take us the rest of the way up the D Trail into Wawa, where we'll base ourselves for a couple of days. Sean made us a solid breakfast to see us off and truly made us feel like family. Welcome back to Halfway Haven anytime. This is one place that'll stick in your memory for the character of the place and the people in it. From here to Wawa is extremely scenic on the power line. Um, when you start to come into the canyon, by the Agua, it's just like it's just a beautiful thing there's there's rock faces we've got access to, to waterfalls and then for people riding back from Wawa it looks like a different trail like it's just a, a totally different trail and then there's endless crown land here so if you like to get out and get dirty and run hills and get stuck you can do that too joining us for the rest of our ride is Russ Jones from Top Secret Boondocking he'll be on the trail with us up to Wawa but also promised us that he knew of a few good places to jump off the trails and do some boondocking along the way. With near endless stretches of crown land, the terrain here is a paradise in the middle of Canada for this type of adventure riding. Well, it basically all started with me and a few buddies. We used to ride off trail all the time and then uh, invited a few more buddies and they told two friends and so on and so on and then it just kind of exploded. Now there's people uh, have heard about it. Basically the secret is out. Um, people from all far and wide know about it and it's great because we've got thousands of acres that are untouched and that's uh, good some people are finally getting to ride them. Some of my best spots I still don't talk about with everyone you know it's it's a it's a le level of trust basically and it's a safety thing too you don't send a newbie to some of the most violent terrain around so um, it's still top secret even to this day. This area where we're at right now is probably our biggest draw. Um, it's a massive area it's probably 20 square miles if you go on Google Earth it, you can, it's visible from space. It's a massive thing. I've been here, riding here for probably 40 years and I haven't seen it all yet. So there's a lot to see. We've come to the end of our ride here in the Algoma region of Ontario in the sweepstakes winner of the Polaris Command Your Ride Contest. And I gotta say, it's been a great couple of days here. The snow conditions have been perfect and the characters and friends we've met along the way are second to none. The Algoma region is a fantastic area to snowmobile in. I mean, although they didn't get the snow that they usually get in previous years, it's still, the conditions are perfect for snowmobiling, uh, apart from being minus 30, but that doesn't deter me, it was amazing. The Algoma area is, is fantastic and the trails are set up so that, um, I mean, you always have fuel, you'll always have a, a place to stay, you'll always have a place to eat. Um, very well marked, very well groomed, yeah, and the conditions were, were fantastic. Where other parts of Ontario are still struggling, Algoma has tons of snow here and there's so much to see. In the last few days, one theme has been developing beyond the snow and the trails, and that's the characters you come across in the snowmobiling world. 
fellows like Sean and Russ, who are never at a loss for another story, and even though we met only a couple of days ago, it feels like a friendship that goes back years. Uh, snowmobiling uh, gets you into that section of people that are, they all come together, and uh, you get all these different characters from all aspects of life. And Sean from Halfway Haven, uh, just such a great guy, uh, just brought us in, you know, arms wide open. He warms right up to you. Another character, uh, Russ from uh, Top Secret Boondocking. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? Um, he's also so entertaining, so friendly, so open, do anything for you at any time kind of thing. So, you know what, this, th these types of people make you want to keep exploring new places and coming back to the old ones to meet them because be you become friends in the end. I have a feeling we sold Dave on the new Polaris Assault and even though it's the end of the trip, I don't think we've seen the end of the Daves. The first time on a Polaris snowmobile, uh, what can I say, they blew me away. I mean, it's night and day almost to my, to my sled that I have back home and I just, uh, I might have to go put a deposit down on one when I get back. So Polaris has the Ride Command app. It's the first time I've used it. I've used similar apps, um, but the really neat thing about the Ride Command app was that you can create your own group. So if you have a group of friends uh, snowmobiling with, you can create your own private group and then you can see where everyone is. Um, you know, even when we get back to the hotel room, we can see where someone is within the hotel. Um, but when we're out on the trails, uh, you know if your buddy is safe if you can't see them because you can still see their slide moving. Um, and the neat thing about it too is that it will track your ride so that you know when you get back home and you and maybe you don't remember the area very well but you'll be able to pull up uh, on, on your app to see where you were, how long your day was, tell stories to your friends. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty neat thing. I also believe that we haven't seen the last of the Algoma region in our riding future. Maybe we'll be back this summer to do the same trip through Halfway Haven on side-by-sides and ATVs. Hey, coming up after the break, we're in Quebec, 2019 Skidoo's Rippers. Check it. Ah, yeah, it's that time of year again. Time when a young man's fancy lightly turns to think of sexy new snowmobiles. Hmm. Uh, I, I mean, uh, what us dudes uh, start thinking of the, uh, the new iron and uh, horsepower and uh, ripping up some pow. For 2019, Skidoo has bolted from the gate first. And they invited the STV and OSM crew to Quebec for a personal look and a first ride. Now, if you're keeping score at home, Skidoo's enjoyed a pretty nice ride over the past 10 plus years. Now, it all started with the first Rider Forward Design Rev in 2003, and they haven't looked back since. Two seasons back, Skidoo engineers introduced their fourth generation, Rev platform called the Gen 4. Get it? Generation 4? <laughs> Clever, huh? Inside that buggy was a new 850 engine. We're talking big bore power. <laughs> now, the sled was also narrower, it was more nimble, and it had a more rider active feel. And for the most part, guys friggin' loved it. And that's exactly what they're doing for 2019. For starters, they introduced a new 600R engine. It's based off the 850, so the little guy is a ripper. 600R is about response. It's got great response in and out of the corners, 30% faster than the 600HO, 125 horsepower, so five more horse than the old motor. It really is a ripper. Now, Skidoo also figured they better up the ante with their four-stroke engine offerings as well. I'm all in. Yo, bro, you know that 900 Ace motor? Yeah. Yeah, well, we put a turbo on it, and it runs awesome. Cool. We should put that in a sled. And that's exactly what they did. 900 Ace Turbo at 150 horsepower. The best part is that dynamic response from corner to corner. You're gonna love the way that thing picks up the skis and goes. Now, to put all that turbo stuff under the hood, Skidoo had to make some room in the Gen 4 chassis. So, they widened it. You know, we say wide body, but let's be real, it's pretty skinny body when you look at it overall. It's just wide compared to the two-stroke model. So it's really light, it's really agile. Yeah, yeah, okay, so it's not a large, large sled. The added width allowed Skidoo engineers to put the turbo motor in there, and they made it look pretty dang sexy. That Gen 4 wide, the nice thing about it is it gives you a little better wind protection, a little more comfort going down the trail for that guy that's in a, let's say, a grain touring, and Enduro's really gonna appreciate it for sure. 
More than just a wide front, the Skidoo crew made sure the entire package all worked together. Seat's a little different. We added a little more length to that seat, so it's the taller guy's got a little more length to it overall, and there's a storage in the back of it. Now the Gen 4 Wide allowed engineers to improve other aspects of the normally aspirated 900 Ace as well. So when we changed it to the Rev Gen 4, we're able to get a little bit different air intake on it. We're able to add the P drive to it and add a little more power to the motor now. More power. That's what I'm talking about. Surprisingly, Skidoo didn't touch their extremely popular Summit of Freeride models. Instead, focusing on offering several variations of the 600R and 900 Turbo Ace, along with the Gen 4 wide platform. Of course, if you're like us, you want to know about the good stuff. You know, the sleds all the cool kids are going to be talking about at school in the lunchroom. Peanut butter and jelly again? Ah, oh, come on, Mom. Two coolest sled in the lineup is going to be the MXZ 600R XRS and the Renegade 900 Ace Turbo XRS. Both really ripper sleds, man. Corner to corner, guys are going to love these things. First impressions, the 600R motor is in fact a tasty number. It has the same kind of run quality as the 850, which means it wants to rev up fast. And based on the little bit of time we've had on it thus far, pulls much harder than the 600HO. As for the 900 Ace Turbo, I mean, come on, who doesn't like some turbo charging? Now, for sure you can feel the added heft of the 900 Ace under the hood, but the power is seamless and for the most part, very predictable. And it's the perfect kind of power for sleds like the Grand Touring or the Renegade Enduro. Now the 900 Ace Turbo XRS is probably the coolest looking sled in the Skidoo lineup for next year. But if banging big bumps is your thing, you're probably gonna wanna stick to a two stroke. But if logging lots of miles, going fast, yeah man, who doesn't like to go fast? And you have a soft spot for fuel efficiency, convenience, and reliability, then the 900 Ace Turbo XRS might be your ticket. Frankly, we can't wait to get one back to the shop for some long-term running and a first burn report for you early next season. I gotta say, it's been a great couple of days here. The snow conditions have been perfect, and the characters and friends we've met along the way are second to none. Till next week, keep your skis on the ground. Uh, I don't wanna say keep your skis on the ground because I never have my skis on the ground. Yeah, but that's you. That's me. Holy crap, it's cold out here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a cold one. Yeah.